like that, actually hitting them. And, okay, she actually managed to escape anyway. Well, that's, I guess she's a Playboy bunny. Welcome friends, we're here back in 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 and today we are going shopping! Yay! Why? Well, there's a sale here. And of course, if there's a sale, well, we have to go shopping, right? I was in the lookout to do a spotlight on... A dart trap, and I thought, what's the better place to get the, the dart trap than, well, in the electronics store? So, low uh, interact with a dart trap here. Anything else? Keyboard? No, no. Let's do a. Let's take a take that one. Let's take that one. Uh, it's gonna take a few seconds, obviously. I'm, I'm, you know, it's it's probably attached to something. So there's gonna be a spotlight of, you know, how to use the dart trap, how to hook it up, and some tips of actually using it. And let's get out of. No, 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 okay, uh, no one is gonna take my money, that's good, okay, uh, fine, fine, let's go out here, where we have a little bit more space, so, let's look at that dart trap, there it is, I have a bunch of them, now when it comes to mass and horizontal support and stuff like that, it doesn't really matter, there's a couple of interesting points here though, hit points, fairly important, it has 2500, which means it's actually not super durable, but it doesn't break very easily either, it's not like wood or anything, explosion resistant actually does make a difference, because if you have cops or demolishers around, well, the higher this one is, well, the longer it might last, vertical support means that you can actually stack things on top of each other, which unlike doors, for instance, which doesn't allow it, allows you to put two on top of each other, even if there's nothing around them to support. Now, a light capacity, of course, it light doesn't shine through it and require power is how much power you actually need to activate it. Normally, when you get your dart traps, well, you could go to the trader and actually buy them or you go and find them. Can you find them? I'm not sure, even sure if you can actually loot them. You probably should be able to. In fun pits, make sure you can do that. But a very common way is actually to craft them. You need some forged iron, mechanical parts, electrical parts, and some oil. And of course, you need to be specced into advanced engineering and once you start hitting it into inventor you can start creating some of this but uh, if you find any early on i would definitely buy them at the trader because you only need one or two and you can have a super effective way to defend your base so let me show you what i mean so let's put it down here let's do something like this and this is why where stacking them actually makes sense and actually trigger plate let me put on a a uh, five by one trigger plate here and let's see let's put it right in front here very simple way of setting it up you have the dart trap you have a trigger plate then you of course you need a source of power simple connect the power to whatever's triggering you could use a trigger plate you could use a switch not as efficient you could use a motion sensor or you can use a trip wire then from this one from the trigger plate you go to the dart trap you go from the trip wire to the dart trap and I put an engine here and I refuel. Turn it on now. If I step on this one, you hear the switch goes off. And if we listen carefully, you barely can hear this ticking noise. Let me increase the volume a bit. That ticking noise is the dart trap trying to fire because, well, there's actually nothing there, which is, of course, because I didn't put any darts in. Let me do another trip wire. Oh, trigger plate, rather. So I don't kill myself. And let's do this. Let's uh, quickly rewire like this. And let's connect it like this. And I'm going to put in some darts, some iron darts. Now you need to make sure that you fill up the as much as you can because they do expand it every shot and lock the ammo. How do you get... Oh, sorry, I was standing on the trigger plate, which was exactly what I wanted to show. Now, but darts are actually crafted in the forge as well. Requires iron and clay, so not really that bad. Now, what happens, as you saw, if I stand here, it shoots. Well, pretty effective, right? It will shoot two per second but how much damage does it actually deal well you actually have to go into the iron dart itself to show that it says 45 range damage which means that every second it's dealing up to 90 damage velocity of course matters not too bad i believe it does have a very slight drop as well so if you look really far down you'll see it looks like it's actually going down into the ground so eventually if you have a really long run, it's no longer going to be able to hit anything because it's going to be hitting the ground. What you normally want to do anyway, you don't want to have this one too far away from where your targets are. 5, 10, maybe 15 is definitely sufficient. Don't run it like 
30, 40 blocks and I think because it's a waste of ammo because whatever steps on the, the trigger plate might already have moved by the time the dot actually hits it. But the damage is actually fairly good. 45 damage per dart. Now it also says it has two block damage and that's something that a lot of, let's see, give me a nail gun. A lot of people have previously been saying that, hey, I don't use it because I'm afraid that it's gonna damage my base. And let's see, 4,999. See, it hits it, dead center. Well, I should slap it below dead center actually, but it doesn't go down. So even though the dart actually has a block damage, it's actually never applied. It's been like this since alpha 16. It's never damaged block. So you can use them in your base without worrying about damaging anything. Keep that in mind, really important. Don't worry about that as well. Use them to your heart's content. So you put in the zombie and let, let's try to do that. Let me just quickly rewire it. So we're actually using this one. And let's put in, actually let's put this one as well. Block the ammo. Why? Oh, pause. I need to rewire this one as well. So now I'm gonna put in a stripper and look at me, not 25. Thank you very much. And it's gonna come up and it missed her. Ooh, and that's a problem with the dart trap because even though it fires pretty fast, unless they happen to stand right in front of it, they can, actually she went to bash that because I was up flying a little bit, so she decided that was a good time to go and bash something. But let's try this again. It hit one of them hit. You saw 45 damage there, which means one hit and one missed. And that's the problem with having a C. She's probably going for something higher. Come back here. Come on. I'll call no. I'm back here. See, the AI is really, really weird. If I come on, make some noise. Nope, nope. Oh, now, now she finally decides to come back. Come on. I need some help to show this off. So even though they fire fairly fast, the problem is that zombies tend to actually move past them before they actually get hit way too much. And if they're running, even more so, if I get rid of this one, and let me put in a feral stripper, she didn't get hit at all because she ran past it and that's a weakness with all these ones. There are some ways around it though. You could for instance put in some poles. Poles are pretty good from a pathing perspective in that the game doesn't really take them into account. The thing is just open so if I do something like this and of course I blocked off behind it and I put in a stripper zombie and she's going to be running up and she's standing right in front of it even though she's bashing things she gets hit by the darts. Really really powerful. The downside is, of course, that she's damaging the poles in front of her. And that can be, of course, a big problem because, well, you don't want to have your poles destroyed. But having poles in front of you, really helpful. If you had, for instance, a door here, it would work exactly the same way. If you don't want to use the poles, you just want to have your walls and your door, a door would, of course, stop them as well. Vault door, even better. There's an even better way of doing it, though. You put in something like this. Let me take out like this. No, no, no do that let's uh, wire in something like a, an electric fence and let's wire that across here like this what this one does is that even uh, let me see if I actually remove the input there so if I put in a stripper zombie here she's gonna be running up here and she get bust you notice she's standing still she's not moving she will eventually after a few seconds start moving or have a chance of starting moving rather and then she could run on Onwards. So if I remove this one, eventually she actually risks being able to make it through. Not all the time. It's a little bit weird. The electric fence is another discussion that we probably have to have with the fun pins of making them not as good at stunning things uh, because they can sometimes stun them forever pretty much. But anyway, you see she's actually being stunned here. So let me take her out and then we bring in another one like this and so she's standing there but then let's uh, connect this one to here and you see what happened come on why is that not getting any power oh there it is finally when it finally triggered it actually killed her really fast because she's st being stunned in place and this is another reason why you might want to make sure that you have holes in front when she ran, let me stop the AI here a little bit. She ran past here. She triggered this one. She got hit by the electric fence, but she sort of passed by the midpoint here. So the electric fence is no longer stunning her. 
and the darts are actually missing her even though they're firing and that's exactly what happened to this lady and this is why this is a really strong combination because the poles hold them in place the electric fence is stunning them and the tar trap is if it actually hits come on like that actually hitting them and okay she actually managed to escape anyway with the I guess she's a Playboy bunny. Anyway, um, so she actually jumped over, which is really interesting. Oh, that's quite a quite some strong legs. So together, they form a really good barrier. However, it's not perfect. One thing that you also want to consider doing when you're having, let's do this one. Let's do another trigger plate. Let's do a single one here. And we're also going to do an arrow slit. What I like to do myself, and let's do, we can do stainless steel, even though you can't actually craft them. It could be anything. Let me do that. I like to put them this way because the arrows can actually fire in between here. And let me put four here. And you might be wondering, uh, what am I going to do with four? Actually, four works really well. This is a signal pass through thing. You connect one and this one you connect to the second. This one you connect to the third. This one you connect to the fourth. And the fourth one you connect to the dot trap. And then you connect this one. To the dot trap and now if it steps on any of these ones it will go off so let's do that again she runs off and get bust you notice when she's bust she's actually being missed by the dot trap but as she stops she moves back just slightly and she gets hit and there are actually some ways to actually alleviate that just a little bit uh, you could for instance if you're using something like what like this you could do something like this and i'm going to build this up just one more so she doesn't jump on top of it that pushes her out just ever so slightly so when she comes in here you see now she is stuck but she's also getting hit by the darts immediately because this one has a slight of a width which means that she's being kept slightly further back and that puts her right where the dog trap is firing you notice dog trap is firing really well through here this one really helps because if there's any explosion the dog trap is being protected if the zombies decide hey you know i don't want to go through here i want to go through your, your dog trap it also protects them so it's always worthwhile because if you've got fully loaded dog traps you've got all your wiring and everything the last thing you want to have is the demolisher go off your dog trap and everything is taken out and the zombies get a nice free walk past uh, all the defenses that you have because normally these ones are behind and sort of inside your base rather than sort of the kill core that you that you created the nice thing about the dart traps is that they have a really small form factor it's just a block and they will do a really good uh, protection for at least the straight line of fire that they have now really effective as well is to put them in the ceiling let's see if i can get that advanced uh, come on like this what you could do just place them like this firing straight down it will generally if you're lucky hit them in the head and that can be helpful sort of in your kill area here because if you got a lot of zombies they might be spreading out here which means that the first one on the side takes damage but the rest of them do not because well it's being absorbed i thought i heard a zombie here what let me take that one down. and maybe i'm hearing things so the zombie that is standing on the left side here will be taking all the damage which means that these ones will be free to do their attacks on your blocks and of course you want to try to maximize it so all you really need to do and of course you can't have everything connected this way but let's say you connect this one to the dot trap then you connect this one to the dot trap this one to the dot trap and this one to the dot trap as well and let's see if we can split the stacks here lock let's do lock here and let's do this one so if you want to connect all these four ones all you do is run the individual line something like this so i go from the generator to a trigger plate up goes up 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 and everything however it means that i'm no longer triggering these ones so even though this works it means that we've now lost the ability to have the side dot traps but but you can actually use those as well anyway you just use a different means of while triggering them let's use these ones and let's turn this one in so we go to generator bank go to the tripwire and the tripwire we go over here to this tripwire and this tripwire we then go back to the dot trap and then let me just take it from here and go up so now something is triggering the tripwire 
it will set off the dart traps. If something is snapping on the trigger plates, well, the respective dart trap above it will actually be firing as well. So let's put in a demolisher. Demolisher is really good because they got all the hit points. But you can see it's standing right here, it's getting hit in the head, and they will never set off the C4, which is really, really important because you don't want to have your demolisher blowing up your base. So by this way, even if you have multiple zombies, and let's see, I don't want to take too many, let me do three, something like this. You see, this one is taking damage from this one, but also from the side one. If you look at these ones, they're only taking damage from the ones that are firing downwards. So normally, depending on which order they actually get hit, this one, actually for some reason, it might actually be taking some damage from the side because these seem to be hit a little bit about roughly the same and this one is slow so one of them maybe the top one is hitting this one and the bottom one is hitting him because they're slightly offset but if this one is only being hit by the uh, down firing so he takes a lot longer but at least it's been taking damage so that shows one of the strengths of having just multiple drop traps and you see he's being stunned by the electric fence as well so did he do much damage on my poles very little, if anything. Nothing here as well. Nothing here as well. I don't think he did. He maybe didn't do any damage at all. So we took out three demolishers. And yes, we did use a bunch of darts, of course. But no damage to our base, pretty much. And, well, actually, we can get some loot as well. Oh, not too bad. Overall, the dart traps is really one of my absolute favorites when it comes to base defenses. Put them in the kill corridor, put them in front of your doors or your vault doors or hatches, and just go to town with producing darts. If you can produce a lot of darts, which is just clay and iron, keep them fed. You can take out literally thousands of zombies per horde, and you don't really have to fire a shot as well. In addition, as you're going up into advanced engineering, if you're looking here at 3, 4, 5, you're actually gaining experience as well from the kills. You see on this one, it says gain 50% experience from electrical trap kills. So as you spec up as well, you're also starting to get kill, uh, kill experience when you're fighting the zombies, which is even better. It's not as much as if you are firing your weapons and killing them directly, but any experience helps you to level up. If you've never used the dart traps before, definitely give it a whirl and try them out for your base and see how effective they can be. If you've used them before, well, hopefully this gave you a little bit of tips of how to hook them up, how to make sure that you get the zombies to stand right in the middle, and maybe how to protect them with arrow slits or how to increase the damage output by putting them on top. Of course, you could put them behind as well, and I've done that in some base builds. The danger is, of course, that you might be standing there and get hit by the darts yourself and get killed, which has happened to me as well. So, yeah, I try to avoid that if I can, even though it can be really effective as well. You could imagine connecting this trigger plate to two ones behind, two ones here, and basically have a lot of dart traps that are firing at the same spot. Of course, it means that, like I said, if you're standing anywhere in front of it, you're going to die super fast. So hope you enjoyed this spotlight video of the dog trap. If you did, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and catch my next video. I'll see you again. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.